I paint like a four-year-old on crack and it's fantastic because I have two four-year-olds. I do not serve them crack, I promise you this. All right. Well, thank you for downloading this episode of KDOI Podcasting. That's Chemo's Den of Iniquity. I'm your host, Timothy Chemo Brian. How are you this fine, fine Saturday? Well, I'm excited because this project is our oil painting project, and we call it a gift of self. Now, for me, painting is difficult to do. I am not a great painter. I will start off with saying that right now. I am not a great painter whatsoever. I paint like a four-year-old on crack, and it's fantastic because I have two four-year-olds. I do not serve them crack. I promise you this. But for me, this is difficult. Other art forms uh, are easier, but this one takes the most practice for me. So Uh, This is going to be a difficult one for me to knock out. As a matter of fact, at the uh, time uh, that this broadcasts, I'm still working on this project. And um, unfortunately, uh, time didn't allow uh, for me to bring on a special guest. But uh, maybe we'll go ahead and do a uh, special mini episode with my uh, good friend Heather Moon, who is a painter. uh, And uh, we can talk to her about what it means to uh, do oil painting. So this one is oil painting. Now, how did I get on this project? Well, a couple of years ago, I thought, hey, you know what? What would be a great Christmas gift would be to do an oil painting of my wife and I in Paris at the I Love You I Love You wall. Now, it's this wall uh, in Paris, obviously, because that's where we were at. Uh, it's this wall that has I Love You written in different languages. So it's kind of a tile, a blue tile, and people usually take a white marker and we'll write I love you on it uh, they'll put a heart on there so we took a picture of that while we were in Paris uh, little did we know we were well we, we did know a few days ahead of time little did we know what we did know that we were pregnant with twins uh, we knew we were pregnant but we didn't know it was with twins and so what I did is I decided you know what would make the perfect Christmas gift for my wife not going to Amazon not going you know, to Michael's or whatever big box stores out there, I was going to go ahead and do an oil painting for her. Now, I've seen a lot of Bob Ross videos. Uh, They look fantastic. He makes it look so easy. So easy. Guess what, folks? It ain't that easy. I'm just going to tell you that right now. It ain't that easy. I I took a class at Pons, uh, P-O-N-S, gallery, and I did it for about three weeks. Uh, It was a two-hour class uh, and uh, you would go once a week. It was like on a Sunday. So I would go and, uh, at Sunday nights and, uh, sit for about two hours and do a painting. It would cost 90 bucks. And all I had to do was bring in a picture and a canvas. And I had somebody there. I had a professional painter there, uh, to guide me, uh, give me brushes, give me, uh, paint knives, uh, get me the actual paint and show me how to clean everything up correctly. So for 90 bucks, that's a steal if you ask me. You know, usually if you're going to a community college, you're gonna pay two, three, four, five hundred bucks for the class. And they're gonna, you know, it's gonna be very academic. Not this time. And the uh the gal there that was teaching me was very patient. She didn't tell me how to do it, but she suggested, hey, you might want to do this first, you might want to do that first. The wife opened up that painting on Christmas Day, and there were tears in her eyes, tears in my eyes. My in-laws were over, and uh, my uh, my father-in-law kind of looked at it and said, okay. And uh, mother-in-law looked at it, just loved it, just fell in love with it. Now, is it a beautiful painting? For us, it is. For other people, they'll look at it and go, mm, that's kind of, eh, whatever, kind of crappy. My wife absolutely loves it. We have it hanging on our bedroom wall. And if I could recommend anyone doing that, I would recommend going ahead and knocking that out for yourself. Go ahead and get the uh, get the paints, get the canvas, and knock that out. So that's what we're going to do for you here today. So today's painting is different. So the first painting was uh, with my wife while she was pregnant, and we didn't know we were going to have twins. So naturally, 
my kids are very photogenic, okay? Genevieve and Cordelia love the camera. They absolutely love the camera. And I love taking pictures of them. They can't wait to, you know, when you take a picture of them, they can't wait to see what it looks like. And they always want to do weird, crazy things. So this time I uh, took a picture of them in their bedroom, in their pajamas, and uh, they were giving each other a hug right before bed. And, you know, isn't that great? You know, the kids are getting, the kids are getting along. It's great. Well, when kids hug in my household, it usually turns into a wrestling match. But I had uh, just got this picture taken just at the right moment. And I thought that's going to make a great birthday gift for them, Christmas gift for them, what have you. So my full intention was to give it to them on their birthday, which is, you know, in June, beginning part of June. And you're going to hear this on June the 30th. I didn't quite make it, folks. You know what? I'm a human being. I'm not perfect whatsoever. If you're uh, looking at the show notes, you'll see a uh, picture of the girls in their uh, purple and green room. That's why we bought the house. We saw the we saw that room and we said, that's their room. This is our house. Let's go ahead and buy it. So that's what we did. And that's them in their pajamas. Um, I believe it was a pretty cold night. It might have been taken one or one or two years ago. My memory fails me, you know, uh, with brain surgery and all that. My memory fails me. That's them in all their glory. Uh, and and uh, just, you know, knocking each other out, having a good time right before we go to bed. Usually I would lay between both the beds and we'd play music and you know, dance to uh, dance to the music or watch videos. You, usually YouTube videos, uh, cat videos, monkey videos, all that kind of good stuff. And uh, just that night, uh, they were just feeling like they needed to hug each other. And I'm all about the hugs. I love getting hugs myself. So they went ahead and hugged each other. Uh, and it was a great, it was a great thing. Now, the reason I'm calling this a gift of self is because when you paint something, you're giving of yourself. You're taking a, a snapshot in time and keeping that forever. So for me, I, I'm going to give this to them soon. Um, when when you hear this, I'm going to be in San Antonio for a uh, work uh, a work trip. So when I get back, uh, I'll go ahead and get this uh, painting all the way knocked out and uh, get it taken care of. And like I said, hopefully we can get Heather uh, Moon on here and we can talk a little bit about oil painting versus acrylic painting because my background most. Uh, most of the paintings that I do are in acrylics and there's a different style and different way that you need to paint with oils versus acrylics. Now, some of you are going to go, Hey Tim, I've never painted at all. Fantastic. Oil painting. Give it a shot. Uh, knock it out for yourself. And definitely when you're doing that, shoot us a email. We're at K D O I podcasting at gmail.com. Our Twitter is at K D O I underscore podcasting you can uh, sh- shoot us a tweet that way on the twitter and definitely obviously the website kdoipodcasting.com we definitely want to uh, hear your stories behind the projects that you do and i know i got a bunch of new listeners that uh, have just uh, tuned in to us and have uh, downloaded a bunch of episodes so i want to thank them for coming on and uh, joining us on our merry way oil painting right yeah, Bob Ross. I'm not going to talk like Bob Ross, all right? I don't have a fuzzy head. I just went ahead and got a haircut, so I'm not going to be your Bob Ross. Although my voice is va- very soothing, some people say. Um, it's more soothing now than it was back in December when I had my uh, neck surgery, for sure. But uh, I'm not going to Bob Ross you here, folks. I'm not going to say go and paint uh, go and paint happy clouds. All right, what do you need what do you what do you need to do this upright? Well, folks, let me uh, break it down for you here. You're going to need a canvas. You got to have something to paint on. That's uh, number one. You got to paint on something. Paint on a wall. Paint on a piece of cardboard. Paint on your toe. Don't care. You got to have something to paint on. I recommend going and grabbing a canvas. Now, um, I big fan of AC Moore. Big fan of Hobby Lobby. Big fan of Michaels. Go get a uh, go get a multi pack. Save yourself some money because once you get doing this, uh, you're going to need some practice at it, and you're going to want to get a whole bunch of canvas or canvas eye if that's what the multiple of canvases are, or maybe it is just canvases. Maybe you'll write in and let me know. That would be fantastic. Kdoi podcasting at gmail dot com. 
So go get you some canvas. I like 11 by 14. And that's big enough for me. I don't need anything bigger than that. Smaller is a little bit more difficult to do. Uh, when I talk with my tattoo artist, they always tell me go bigger. Uh, and the reason for that is, is you can put more detail if it's bigger versus if it's smaller. Everything gets kind of crammed together. And if you're looking at this picture with the girls, there isn't a whole crazy load of detail in it. But the 11 by uh, uh, 14 just seems to work that much better. And it reminds me of an 8.5 by 11 uh, sheet of paper anyways. So uh, that's why I like it. So definitely get you some canvas. Brushes. Get get a variety pack of brushes. You're going to find you like some and don't like others. The uh, pack that I have has natural and synthetic uh, fibers on the brushes. Uh, so what does that mean? Horse hair and then like kind of a vinyl or plastic kind of thing. Uh, with some of this, I liked the uh, synthetic versus the uh, natural brushes, uh, the natural uh, fibers. It's just whatever feels good to you on this uh, is what you should go with. Some people will swear by one and swear by the other. Go get a variety pack and find out for yourself. Variety packs don't cost that much. And we'll go over the cost here in just a little bit. Paint knives. And, you know, these are not the stabby, stabby knives, okay? You're not going to get a switchblade and paint with it, although that'd be kind of fun. Um, paint knives are basically to help you get into tight little spots, uh, get, get you nice washes of uh, paint in uh, certain areas, especially like I have a lot of wall color in this, um, so that I use a lot of the uh, paint knives in that wall color to give me a nice smooth surface, a nice smooth uh, uh, texture on that. And of course, I'm talking with my hands while I do this. You can't see me talk with my hands, but just imagine me talking with my hands at a blank, looking at a blank wall going, paint knives, texture, smoothness. Uh, they blend the colors really well too. It gives you a nice even coat of whatever you're doing or however you're doing that. So get some paint knives, not the stabby stabby type. Um, turpentine, you're going to need that to uh, clean out your brushes and maybe do a thin out the paint a little bit uh, for yourself because uh, oil paint gets to be kind of thick. It can be very thick. Sometimes you need to thin that out a little bit for yourself. Oil paint. Oh, gosh. Well, yeah. Come on. you got to have some paint. <laughs> okay. It's not an oil painting without oil paint. All right? Just remember that, folks. It ain't oil painting if you ain't got the oil paint. All right. I don't know what you're doing. You're sitting in front of a canvas, looking at it, willing the picture to pop out of that. Ain't going to happen. This isn't sculpture. The painting must be painted in order for it to be a piece of art. You can't just have a blank canvas, canvas there and go, oh, well, I was going to paint this on there. It was going to look like that. Well, then go do it. All right. And that's what you're going to do on this episode. I'm going to want some like t-shirts or rags uh, for cleanup. And be careful with that because you don't want anything spontaneously uh, exploding out there on yourself. Uh, and then you're going to want some uh, paint soap uh, to go ahead and wash the uh, those brushes and the paint knives off. And that way you can remove any traces of paint off your paint knives. That way when the cops come by and they try to go, hey, 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 what's going on here? And then you can go, mm, there ain't no paint on my paint knife. It's all clean. You're going to need an easel. Um, and the, I really like the easel that I got. Um, it was a really good one. It had a little storage area in it as well. And it was big enough for my uh, 11 uh, by uh, 14. But it wasn't too, uh, it wasn't too freaking huge. It, it, it stays on a tabletop just fine. And I'm usually painting on my couch, uh, on my little uh, coffee table that I have in my man cave. It's right next to the podcast booth. Isn't that amazing? So I could podcast and paint at the same time. Maybe that's what I should have done. Maybe that's what I'll do in this special edition. And then uh, last but not least, you want a pencil to uh, sketch out what you want to do on the actual canvas for yourself. So you've got all your materials uh, pulled together. And I do have pictures of the materials that I have there for you. Um, you can go with those if you want. You can go your own way. Again, this podcast has not been brought to you by Fleetwood Mac, although it might help to listen to some Fleetwood Mac while you're doing this. Uh, I've got pictures of all the uh, supplies that I used. Oh, also you're going to need, uh, the thing I forgot to write in the notes here, you're going to need a place to mix your paints. You're going to need a palette uh, to mix your paints. And the paint knives are actually called palette knives, but I call them paint knives because I put paint on them. But I mix them with a the palette. I know, a little confusion there, but make sure you have a palette so that way you can mix your colors. Um, when you're doing the oil paints, a lot of times your uh, oil paints you get a variety pack, obviously. Uh, a lot of times they'll come with a a, uh, a a paint wheel 
to kind of help you with your mixing. Now, one thing you could do is you could, I've seen people do this before, uh, do like a, a mixing chart. So you take, you know, uh, one part this color, one part that color, mix it together. That's the color you get. Uh, you can definitely do that for yourself. And that, that's more of a hands-on kind of thing if you want. Um, but, uh, myself, I, a little bit lazy on that side. So I'll go ahead and use my paint wheel and be just fine with that. So at this time, uh, we're going to take a moment to, uh, bring on, uh, our gaggle pod and our new news podcast coming on, uh, in July. And then we'll get right back into it, folks. So give us just a minute. Hey, this is Timothy Kimo O'Brien, head instigator at KDOI podcasting. You know, we create more than we consume every other week, and we want to create with you. So check us out on our website, kdypodcasting.com. Email is at kdypodcasting at gmail.com. And the Twitter is at kdy underscore podcasting. I want to thank you for the download that you just did, for the subscription that you just made, and for sharing this podcast with your friends. So thank you for creating more than you consume with us here at KDOI Podcasting. KDOI is a proud member of the Gagglepod Network. Gagglepod, a place for storytellers that need a strategy, a platform, and a chance to be heard. Learn how to create your next podcast at gagglepod.com. Do you like your heroes with a little more than two dimensions? How about some dirt underneath their fingernails? Tired of heroes in tights or white hats? Come on over to Gray Heroes, where no one gets out clean. People who play by their own rules. Take a listen at grayheroes.com. Let those pretty fly boys in capes go back to bed. Take a listen at grayheroes.com. And put those pretty fly boys in capes and tights to bed. Gray Heroes, just a hair over on this side of the law. Gray Heroes, no one gets out clean. New stories every two weeks. Sponsored by the Gagopod Network. Find out more at gagopod.com. For storytellers that need a strategy, a platform, and a chance to be heard. Learn how to create your next podcast at gagopod.com. All right. Hey, thank you, uh, Gagopod for uh, sponsoring us and uh i can't wait to see what that gray heroes is going to be about that sounds pretty cool too bad i shaved my beard because then i could show you some real gray heroes right there anyhow let's get back to this oil painting shall we all right i've uh i've uh i've stalled for long enough all right so step one okay well but step point point five actually find something that inspires you to paint all right, find a picture. Come on, you can step outside and, and find something. Hell, you probably don't even have to step outside. Take a picture of somebody in your family. Take a picture of a room. It, it's amazing what you uh, can uh, do, be inspired by, if you just you know go out there with the intention of, I'm going to be inspired. So go out there with the intention of being inspired. Take a picture of that, and that's what you're going to do a painting of. If, if you can't think of anything else, go grab your phone, use your phone for good instead of for evil. Stop looking at porn or playing Candy Crush on it. Use your phone as a force for good and change in the world and go out there and take a picture. I don't care what, anything, just go out there and do it and then come back and blow that up, print it out on a color printer, get it on some good color paper and frame it and call it done. No, 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 no. This isn't photography class. That's later on. That's a few episodes down the road here. This is painting class. So go ahead and uh, knock that out for yourself. Then step one is actually going ahead and um, go ahead and sketch that painting out. Now this, y you can kind of make it paint by numbers if you want to, and that's perfectly fine. That's kind of how I do it. Go ahead and sketch that out for yourself. And it doesn't have to be super detailed. It just give it an idea of what you're going to have there, where you're going to place things. Okay? This is going to be your guide to do it. And then while you're sketching it, kind of plan out. Okay, well, this is where the wall is green. This is where the wall is purple. This is where their hair is. And the color of their hair is kind of blondish brown or brownish blonde. 
Um, their pants are black or purple or have some design in them. The bed sheet is red, so I'll make sure that I get that bed sheet in there. Sketch it out so it makes sense to you because you're going to paint over this. All right, no one's going to see the sketch. This is just for you to go ahead and lay down the foundation. We haven't committed to anything yet because we're sketching it with a pencil, so we can always erase. If we screw up here, that's fine. We can always erase. So go ahead and get that sketched out for yourself. All right, step two is decide how you're going to approach the paint. All right, how, uh, what area are you going to do first? Are you going to do the walls first? Are you going to do the faces first? Are you going to go in the highly detailed areas first? Pick how you're going to attack this painting because you may have to flip it over a few times and you don't want to flip it over while you got wet paint going on one, you know, one part of it. So kind of plan out for yourself. Uh, have a little plan on what you're going to do in terms of, okay, I'm going to do the walls first. I'm going to do the background first and I'm going to paint on top of the background. You can do that if you want to. Some people, they like to do the detailed stuff first and then the background. When I did the painting for uh, my wife, that's what I was going to do. I was going to do the walls first, and then I was going to do the uh, detail stuff uh, last. And my instructor said, no, 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 no. Do the face, do the bodies first, and then do the walls. And it actually turned out very well when I did it that way. Step three, start mixing your colors. Now, if you're going to do it into sections and you're going to break this up into a few sessions, then just mix the colors that you need. And I would, I would mix a little bit more, mix more than you think you're going to need. All right. Um, once you get painting, uh, you'll see how far that paint can spread and you know, how much you're going to need to cover a certain area. That's a whole skill in and of itself. Your first time out, you're not going to get it right. So put in a little bit more than you think you're going to need and then mix that bad boy up for yourself and get that paint on the canvas. Step four. We begin painting. It took us four steps to put the paintbrush into the paint and into onto the canvas. But you got, you really, the thing of it is, folks, you really want to plan this out ahead of time. Okay. Now, in the first uh, picture you're going to see there, um, that's after my first session. Uh, I usually break stuff into a couple of sessions, usually uh, three or four sessions. And that was after my first session. There's a hockey game in the background. It was the uh, NHL Stanley Cup uh, playoffs, okay? I was a little distracted, and the playoffs are happening in May and June. Oh, my God. I love hockey. I love painting. I love painting while watching hockey. Sometimes I get distracted, and I'll paint a fight scene in there, but you'll never know. Anyhow, this is what I'm talking about when when I'm talking about painting different sections. If you see, If you can see the uh, picture there, and if you're looking at the website, you'll be able to see it. If you're looking at some of the uh, podcatchers, you'll be able to see it. Other than the podcatchers, like the uh, Google, um, uh, the new Google uh, app, you won't be able to see this. So definitely go to the website. Uh, you'll see that you know I painted out a certain section there. I painted out the uh, top wall, the top of the wall green, and then the purple, and I left out the uh, the, the uh, bed there, uh, the railing on the bed. Uh, I, I turned the dresser into a blue dresser it was a white dresser turned it into a blue dresser and you can change stuff you know it, it's whatever you see oh, and if, if you find that you know you need to change something by all means change it that blue dresser the story behind that is i was going to paint cordelia's pants and i was going to paint them kind of a blue and the blue didn't come out the way i wanted to and i didn't want to waste the blue so i said you know what the hell with it i'm going to paint the dresser blue nobody's going to ever know because you're not going to go up to their room unless you come for a visit and I give you the nickel tour. All right. But, and, and that, you know, it's an open invitation to you guys. You want to come over to the house and, you know, get the nickel tour, make sure you got a nickel. Cause if you don't have a nickel, you ain't getting the tour. All right. Just, you know, heads up on that. Uh, so I went ahead and uh, that's what I call my first session. Now it doesn't look like a whole hell of a lot. And, you know, I did some of the, uh, did some of the flesh tones in there as well um, for uh, Genevieve on there. And it, you know, it looks kind of like a, you know, them, but not really. So that's first session. Second session, you get a little bit more in there. You know, the paint dried a little bit. Um, I gave uh, Cordelia purple pants to match the purple wall. All right, that's fine. And they're sitting on the bed there. And that's fine. Uh, Cordelia has blonde hair. Genevieve has more brownish hair. 
So I'm painting it in different sections. I made the uh, the bed post, uh, the uh, the railings on the bed, more of a gray than a white because I thought it showed up better for me. It showed up a little bit better. Now what I didn't do there is I didn't put the uh, the there's a uh, chair rail running uh, midway on the wall. I didn't put that in there because that's that's a lot of detail work that I'm going to tell you right now. I'm not good at detail work. I'm I'm not a painter uh, officially. I like to paint, but I'm not a painter. My good friend, Heather Moon, she's definitely a painter. And when we get her on here, that might be one of the things that we talk about, how to do that detail work and how to do good facial work. Because on here, facial work is not good at all, folks. Uh, But remember, it is the feeling, it's the emotion, it's the intention behind it. We're not going for perfection here. What we're going for is that feeling and trying to get the idea down on the canvas. So you paint each section, let each section dry first. And with oil paints, it takes a while to dry. So this isn't going to be a project that you can knock out really quick. You can knock it out in two or three hours and be done with it. This is one that you have to paint a section, let it dry, paint a section, let it dry, paint a section, let it dry. And just, you know, make sure that you're just being very methodical with that. All right, so once you get all the way done, let it dry, apply some sealant to it. That way you won't get any dirt and grime and all that kind of crap into it. And that'll seal that paint in there. And that way you can keep it forever. And then last but not least, throw a frame on that bad boy and uh, call it done. All right. So uh, that's it in pretty much five easy steps. I know it sounds, you know, you're like five easy steps. Oh my God. But we didn't talk about brush stroke. We didn't talk about tone or value or anything like that. That's something that we'll talk about in the uh, special, uh, in the special uh, edition. And we'll talk about different brush strokes you can use and all that. But this is just, it's one of those things that you kind of got to, for me, I got to do it for myself. You know, I got I to gotta go and play around with it and uh, knock that out. Now, I do have a lot of other paintings and a lot of them are in acrylic. Uh, I usually don't do uh, people too much. I usually don't do figure work like that too much. I, I'm big into the abstract but um, this is, you know, kind of my first, well, not my first attempt, but this is like my second or third attempt uh, to go ahead and uh, do some figure work on this. Um, it's not perfect, uh, but I tried it. And that's what I'm encouraging all of you to do is give it a shot. You know, it, you're not a Van Gogh, you're not a Picasso, and that's okay. Because here's the thing, when I give this to the girls, they're going to absolutely love it. Yeah, they're four years old. They're going to, you know, they'll love anything I give them. They will love this. It'll be just fine. My wife loved the picture that I painted for her. Was absolutely in tears. Mother-in-law, absolutely in tears. Father-in-law, eh, well, you know, you know father-in-laws. Anyhow, um, give it a shot for yourself. I think you're going to enjoy it. Enjoy it. This one takes time. Not going to lie to you. This one is not going to be one that you can knock out in a weekend. This one, you know, when you give it to somebody and they go, oh, wow. And you let them know, hey, listen, this took some time. And then when you go to an art gallery, and I highly recommend that you get your butt over to an art gallery. In Fredericksburg, here we have First Fridays. Go to all the art galleries for free. Not that they really charge you anyways, but all the studios are opened up in the evenings. And we got a trolley that runs through the town. You heard about that in season one. And I'm you know, letting you know about it in season two. And most of your big cities have something like this, you know, first Friday, second Thursday, third Wednesday of the week. I don't know. Um, but check out your local area and check out those galleries. And then when you walk in there and you look at the paintings and you talk with the painters, then you understand why, oh, that's, you know, that little, you know, four by four is $500. Why is it so expensive? Because this takes time. This is not easy, okay? If everyone could do it, then everyone would do it. But not everyone can do this. So lessons learned on this one. Lesson number one, take your time. Do it in layers. Uh, Don't paint this like acrylics. Acrylics can mix real easy and you can slap those down and they dry real quick. Oil takes forever to dry. So take your time. Step two, get help early on in the process from someone who has way more experience. I did not on this painting. On the first first painting I did for my wife, yeah, I got help on that one. This one I winged it on myself. Didn't turn out as well as I wanted it to. But you know what? That's okay because I have more canvas. Oh my God. I went to Michael's and got a lot of canvas. Michael's, not a sponsor of this show. AC Moore, not a sponsor of this show. Hobby Lobby, not a sponsor of this show. That's okay. Uh, Three, 
uh, plan out your sections, plan out my sections better, uh, and be okay with uh, doing smaller portions and taking your time. Plan out those sections, okay? Know what you're going to color before you color it, and then just knock it out for yourself. That is this week's show. I want to thank you for uh, downloading the podcast and for listening in. I'd really like it if you were to go ahead and uh, shoot me uh, an email at kdoipodcasting at gmail.com or on the Twitter at kdoi underscore podcasting. And that way um, you can share the story behind your project. If if there's a project in here that you tried and you're like, wow, you know, that was Tim, I did a lot better than you. Show me a picture of it. Tell me the story. I want to hear. I want to share those stories with everybody else that's listening in because that's the thing, folks, is we share our stories and we connect with each other and we create more than we consume. It's not just a, uh, a catchphrase, folks. I really want you go out, going out there and creating more than you consume. All right. You're going to enjoy it. Your friends and family are going to enjoy it. Um, these are gifts that you can give that are from the heart. And really, that's what it's about. When we're giving our gifts, when we're teaching our kids um, what the meaning of, uh, you know, whatever holiday it is that you give gifts. You know, some people it's Christmas, some people it's Hanukkah, uh, some people it's Kwanzaa, some people it is uh, Yom Kippur, Ramadan, whatever your whatever holiday you're celebrating, okay? Winter solstice, summer solstice. Make those gifts for your friends and family. It's going to mean a lot more to them because it's coming from the heart. And really, that's what it's all about. So again, I want to thank you for listening in to KDOI Podcasting. I'm Timothy Kimo Bryan, your host and your head instigator here, reminding you to create more than you consume. And we'll see you in two weeks. And, you know, these are not the stabby, stabby knives, okay? You're not going to get a switchblade and paint with it, although that'd be kind of fun.